Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, brothers, sisters, friends, enemies, and frenemies. If this is your first time on this channel and you uh, vibe with what we're doing here, I invite you to like, subscribe, and share if you care. Please drop a comment to the regulars here. I'm going to be taking a look at a, an entire playlist, but I want to tell you from the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, and this person who calls herself Celestial. I have already determined that this person is not of God. These prophecies are not of God. She is, in fact, a false prophet. Now, because there's so much convoluted material on her channel and in her videos, I'm going to break down what I'm going to show you um, before we do this. I'm going to go to every video and I'm going to play the first 30 seconds of the video. So you see how she comes off at the beginning. Then all I'm going to do is go to about the halfway mark and take a temperature of the teachings and the prophecies she's doing. And then we're going to go to the next one. Okay. We're not going to, uh, I'm just going to do this so I can review as much of her material in as fast a period of time as possible. So let's do this. This playlist is called, and I'm going to go through several of these playlists. And if you are following her, she is not anointed of God. This woman is a sadist. A sadist, by definition, is a person who takes pleasure in the pain and humiliation of others. This woman does not preach the gospel. This woman does not comprehend the grace of God. She does not recognize what Christ has accomplished, the finished work of Christ for the reconciliation between sinful man and a holy God. She does not understand the power of the blood of Jesus and the new birth, new creation experience. She does not understand that God's will is that he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. This woman takes pleasure in pain. This woman takes pleasure in a lack of mercy, in a lack of grace, in a lack of love. And she is particularly anti-American. She hates people. And she shows a complete disdain and contempt for the people of America and the Christians of America. Let's just, just go through this first video. Let me look at the title of this. And it goes like this. Chimera, hybrids, Nephilim, and super soldiers. Okay, so like I said, we're going to take the th first 30 seconds of her video. And here we go. Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you're very welcome. If you're relatively new to the channel, I would like to recommend that you visit the Master's Voice itself, the Master's Voice End Times Prophecy blog. The URL is in the description box below so that you can read every prophecy that you're, you may be watching a video for for yourself. I always recommend that it's easier to read the blog and it also tends... Okay, so she's inviting people who are viewing her videos to also read her material. Now let's go on. I'm going to not go, I'm going to go, yeah, about halfway. I'm going to go about the 1430 mark and take the temperature of what the content of this video is. That's about Chimera, hybrids, Nephilim, and super soldiers used in war. Let's check it out. Is this coming from God? And in the Bible, it says that Goliath needed people to carry his stuff because his helmet was heavy, his breastplate was heavy, his javelin and his shield was heavy. And this tells you that if a man is going into war and he is able to jump and run and fight with weapons so heavy that ordinary humans need to carry them one by one, then this tells you that we are dealing with stock that can grow to great heights and exhibit great violence, great rage and extreme strength and speed. This is the seed of Satan that will be alive in the end days, fighting in armies. I do not know what armies, but the Lord is saying that actual DNA from actual Nephilim will grow new super soldiers. Also, some are the result of mixing natural animal DNA with human DNA. In uh, <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Uh, Wait a minute. Who are you? This is not written in the word of God. This woman is literally, I mean, so she's claiming to be a prophetess. She's claiming a lot of claims here. Nephilim DNA is going to be mixed with human DNA. And I think it gets rapidly bad real quick. Ah, yeah, we're doing this. 
we're using the Fair Use Act of 1976. We're reviewing this for purposes of, yeah, criticism, uh, teaching, and scholarly research. I'm taking my cues from the scripture and saying, nah. Tended to mix the form of an animal with humanity for a new result. This group includes pig and man, a very high number of dog and man, and also wolf and man. I shared in one of... So we're going to have dog man creatures, pig man creatures, and wolf man creatures? <sighs> Okay, I mean, I, I've already shot this down. This is not, this is not a prophet. <laughs> this is not a prophet of God. This is a prophet is coming from her own debased and wicked imagination. Of the prophecies that is called the summer is past. That one of the visions the Lord showed me in that prophecy was things happening deep under the ground here in the United States. And I saw that either a man had been made into a wolf or a wolf had been given human tendencies in some kind of experiment because I saw an upright being that was fully furry all over, but the eyes of this being was were human eyes. And the eyes of this wolf was sad because this thing was being held underground for an extremely long time. A sad wolf being. Um. Okay. I, I hope that if there's anybody out there with an ounce of sanity that you already can see, this is not of God. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. It's amazing how eloquently and how good she can speak. You know, she does not. Sp you think of someone who's out of their mind, you know, and lose lost touch with reality has no. Cog you think that they would be, you know, uh, not speaking like this. And I think that is the thing that, you know, seduces people into believing that she's authentic just because of her speaking ability. But she has no prophetic ability and no value for the word of God. And being experimented on. And so it had human eyes. And yet the entire countenance, the snout and everything else was a wolf. And that is one of the places where the Lord exposed that here in the United States. Hybridism is not in potentia, meaning that it is not something that the scientific community is is thinking about. I said that the end times headlines, this is on the blog in the prophecy entitled hybrids, the great falling away hybrids. And what the Lord revealed to me is that the end times headlines are going to be dominated with very big and hectic questions, questions of the day. And these questions are literally going to tear the fabric of society and humanity apart because it will be impossible to stay neutral in those days. The kinds of questions that are going to dominate the end times headlines have nothing to do with gas and oil pipelines and all the mundanity that we cover here. There are going to be massive questions on the table, like should clones live, such as should clones be given the right to marry the human population? Things like that. And whenever the Lord shows me in those dreams, society is extremely disrupted. People are extremely upset, extremely angry. Pat okay, we're going to move along to video number two. Okay, let's watch the let's watch how she begins, and then we're just going to hop to the middle and see what it looks like in the middle. March the 9th, 2022, which was just yesterday. And by the grace of God, I will March be able 9th, to approach this prophetic word with care because this is the type of prophetic word where no matter how it is delivered it is bound to cause it is bound to cause consternation it is bound to cause wondering it is bound to cause some kind of reaction in the human heart because of the content that it contains i shared yesterday that the lord gave me two prophecies i went to the 52 second mark so she prepares her audience by telling them this is going to this this is not going to sound right this is going to get to you this is going to bother you so it's almost like she's wanting to get you to shut down your logical, the gifts of God. Some of the gifts of God are the gift of logic that we can choose to follow the bounds of logic, reason, um, harmony. Does this, does this harmonize with the Holy spirit? Does this harmonize with scripture? Um, sometimes, um, and, and, and what she's trying to do is she's just trying to deep program people from reality. Yep. This is going to shock you. So this video is entitled, well, it says, watch to the end, Iron Mixed with Clay, The Mighty Men. Now let's go, we're at the 31 minute, 31 second mark. Let's see, this is just taking, taking random samplings to see what we come up with. Bucket before him. I've shared about the bucket that I saw in heaven that was filled with what I can only call slop. It was this gray, mushy, like disgusting, filthy, stinking oatmeal and a bucket. Somebody kicked that bucket over in heaven and it washed across the entire earth, defiling it with every form of sexual immorality that you want to think of. And this stink. So 
Did you get what she said? She said this bucket of slop was in heaven. And I, I'm going to slow this down. <sighs> yeah, we might just take a little bit of time here. Slow this down. Run it back 31. <laughs> so we can do this and hear the way she accentuates the words, the way she emphasizes certain things. And and understand that you, <laughs> you are going to emphasize and accentuate what gives you pleasure, what's really exciting in your heart yourself or with a partner in the privacy of your home. The Lord has often said that fornication has overflowed the earth and that it causes the earth to look like a slop bucket before him. I've shared about the bucket that I saw in heaven that was filled with what I can only call slop. It was this gray. There's a bucket in heaven filled with slop. Now, even if, you know, and fornication is a sin, you know, um, and I'm sure it's it, it's vile in the eyes of God. But that means it exists in heaven. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. A mushy, like disgusting, filthy, stinking oatmeal and a bucket. Somebody kicked that bucket over in heaven and it washed across the entire earth, defiling it with every form of sexual immorality that you want to think of. And this stink, the stink in that. Uh, see what she likes to say? She likes to say vile and disgusting and horrific things. And, you know, I don't think there's a lot of sexual overtones in the, these. Maybe there is one that we'll run across. But she's got some such disgusting, vile videos about um, things that she claims God showed her or, or put in her mind or she had a vision that did not come from God. Holy thoughts and holy things come from God. Not what comes out of this woman's mouth. She likes this. She's taking pleasure in saying these things. Filing it with every form of sexual immorality that you want to think of. And this stink, this stink in that vision was incredible. It rose up from the earth to heaven and was so offensive. And that stink, that water, it could not sink into the earth. It formed stagnant pools everywhere. And this is what God is talking about. So one of the visions that I saw is I saw young girls when they're in the YOLO stage of their life, even grown women in their thirties and forties are still doing this now. And you get dressed up in the tiniest things that you can, and you get your hair done and make yourself pretty. And I saw them go out. It looked like 20 somethings and they went out to a dancing place or a club. And when they went there, it was almost as if they were playing a game of choose your partner. Each young girl went up to a man and pulled him in a suggestive fa fashion, had fun with him in the club. And then each one took him home for the night. So it was about five friends that took five men home for the night. But here is the thing. After they had put, performed the intimate act, every single man got up, dressed, and walked out the door. Not a single one of them stayed behind. Very good-looking men. They all got up, got dressed, and walked out. And the Lord said to me, Celestial, those are all Nephilim. Those are all agents. Their purpose is singular to About, man. First of all, it was not bad enough. If it's not bad enough that she claims God showed her this, now she's saying, saying that God told her that those were Nephilim. Let's hear it again. And the Lord said to me, Celestial, those are all Nephilim. Those are all agents. Their purpose is singular to spread their seed as far as they can. And I saw that some of the girls went back to the same nightclub after a few days because they really wanted to see those men again. Obviously, those men won't call. This is what the Lord was showing, that they will not call. They will not make contact. They are not looking for relationships. They are looking for wombs. And females of this generation have certainly stopped being women and have just become available wombs. You think that you are on whatever these pills are that can prevent pregnancy. That's right, because your level of discernment is at the point where you actually think that a physical medication is going to work against the sperm of a crocodile or the sperm of something that was living before your entire family line came into being. Uh, a sperm, the, the, the Nephilim are depositing crocodile sperm into unwitting hosts. 
Okay, that's video number two. Let's go on. Okay, here we go to the human alien hybrid question. That's this title of this video. Let's do the first 30 seconds or so. Then let's just hop in the middle, randomly seeing where the prophet is being led by, allegedly led by the Holy Spirit. Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. I'd like to make a few announcements for the benefit of new people. And so I hope that old subscribers, people who have been here for at least six months or more, that you will be patient when occasionally you see announcements in the beginning of the videos. This is for the benefit of people who may have just been referred to this video by family or friends, or maybe by the sovereign grace of God. Okay, no, nobody's referring anybody to you by the sovereign grace of God. Let me absolutely give you certainty on that. This woman does not serve God. She serves Satan. She serves Satan and you're rebuked and highly encouraged to shut your channel down, shut your mouth down and stop claiming to be a spokesperson for God because you are not. So we've moved to the 32 minute mark. Let's see what kind of, what do we call that? Uh, what's our term on here? What kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs is she going to talk about at the 32 minute mark? Thing, even insane things. And so God is saying that as we see this hive mind starting up, as we see this group think starting up, driven by the media, there's a prophecy on the master's voice that is called hiding among us, hidden in plain sight, aliens hidden in plain sight. I'll link it in the description box below and I'll try to leave it in a comment. Sometimes my comments get deleted by the algorithm. Uh, so uh, it, it may not be there, but I will definitely put it in the description box. And in that prophecy, I was shocked to see that a woman who had a father who worked in these secret investigative alien life witness program, that there's a witness program here in the United States, um, and people were saying, oh, this is like men in black. It might be, but there is a witness program here, and the Lord showed me in that witness program that they have a lot of aliens that look just like you and me, normal people. They have businesses, they have children, they have integrated among us, and then there's another type of alien that is so violent and has openly expressed desires to kill people and shred people, that they're kept in underground testing facilities and stuff hidden all across the United States. So those ones have to be kept in captivity and monitored because they are very vocal about their desire to kill. And this is what the alien deception will be. They will bring out the good ones and say that the good ones should live with us. And it's going to be this fake game of when the bad ones come, then the good ones are going to say, don't make treaties with the bad ones. Don't involve yourself with them. They're dangerous. But hear the words of the Lord. It is all one defiled abomination that comes from Satan, the cursed and defiled abomination in chief. And if anyone falls for it, if any nation or any person affiliates themselves with this thing, they will get the full. What makes anybody think this nonsense and this foolishness is coming from God? How? Okay, I got to bring, bring a little bit of word in here to add some sanity to this. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he also made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior. Nothing mentioned about this foolish and ignorant nonsense. Now, let's go on to video number four. Okay, before we go on to the next um, uh, disgrace of even a person trying to claim to be a prophet of God. Let's read and remember Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 through 38, the words of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. Now, much of what the Bible talks about is the fruit of our lips, the fruit of our mouth, what we are saying. We're comparing what a person is saying to what the word of God says. Okay, but watch this. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good 
when you are evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his tr good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word. People will have to give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. So this person claims to be a spokesperson for God. What comes out of her mouth in the video first 30 seconds and see how see how she can be nice and welcoming in the beginning. But you can get very shortly into these videos and it becomes a complete ungodly train wreck. This is the end of the age hybrids. A look at transhumanism. This is the fourth video of the playlist. Hello again and welcome to the master's voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Please adjust your streaming settings if they're not clear. I know for me, when I check these videos back, sometimes they're very fuzzy. So you can adjust them at the top. Um, there should be three dots in a menu and you can adjust them there or maybe on a tablet or a laptop. You look at the bottom until you see a little cog icon and then you can adjust the quality. We are still in the Supernatural series and I am looking at a particular aspect at the Lord's request because I was headed in, still heading in the giants, angels, aliens direction, but the Lord inter intervened um, a day ago or a few days. Okay, so she's claiming... This is coming from the, of course, I mean, that's what a prophet does. They speak for the Lord. This woman does not speak for the Lord. I'm going to go to the 10 minute mark and then I'm going to go to the 20 minute mark or so. So let's see what happens. Right for humanity. Satan will rise up in his normal serpentine form and say, did God really say? This is a great way to keep yourself out of trouble generally as a Christian. When you come across any question in life, you will always end up in trouble if you do not know what the Bible says about that. So the first group of people who end up in trouble with God are people who lack the knowledge on what God says on certain things. And as we will discover. I agree. Hath God really said? That's the first thing the serpent did in the garden. But watch this. None of the things that she says has God said. She takes convoluted, uh, unclear passages and, and things about there's very 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 almost nothing in the bible about nephilim she takes unclear and vague passages and she's creating a doctrine and a teaching that is not in scripture so she is an ambassador a co-worker she follows the mo of satan god has not said these things celestial saying these things and they're coming from her own wicked heart in this prophecy, the majority of people the world over lack information on what God's views are concerning everything under the sun. And so that's the first group of people who always go astray. The second group of people who go. That's the, that's the fruit that that literally is who is on her channel. People who have no knowledge, no biblical understanding. They don't know what exegesis is. They don't know what hermeneutics is, exegesis to extract and to get the meaning of the scripture according to the authorial intent, hermeneutics, interpreting what it says and what it means relative to truth, not relative to my own personal application. Eisegesis is when you take the word of God and twist it and manipulate it to do your bidding and to work in accordance to your narrative. That's what Celestial does. She eisegetes scripture. She takes it and applies it to her nonsense go astray are people who have a working knowledge of what God says, but are not convinced. So that's a lot of your seeker sensitive crowd, the people moving from church to church, movement to movement, new age, Baha'i and whatever else they have wearing the orange robes, robes and chanting about Krishna and different things. Those people may have a general idea of the main themes in Christianity, but because they are not interested in a fully immersed commitment to Christianity, they see the things that God says as suppositions, like dials on a radio. You can dial it up, you can dial it down, you can basically tweak it to suit you, but it's not something, it's not a philosophy or a life goal that they want to internalize and follow. The next group of people are people who definitely know what God- I would say that kind of could apply to her crowd too, because they, they have just a very shallow depth of understanding of Christianity. And they, they would come to a channel like hers 
and they would like, maybe you have the personality of a wrathful, vengeful, angry person. Maybe you like the idea of wicked. See, you have to almost be self-righteous to be like this because you have to consider yourself a righteous one and all of those people are the wicked and the evil people. But the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That's for all who sin, which is all of us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You don't hear that. You don't hear about the gift of God. You don't hear about grace. You don't hear about mercy. You don't hear about forgiveness. You don't hear about the, the unjust and the evil and the wicked who put their faith in Christ and repent of their, their godless lifestyle being forgiven and reconciled to God. You don't hear that anywhere in her teaching. God says, but then because of prevailing wisdom in the earth, they are existing on a mobile plane. So kind of like this. So they're flowing along according to what is popular in society from time to time or what will not get them judged by other people. Or you notice that these people even change depending on what group of people they're with. The next group of people are people who know what God says about a thing. and. Are she got a lot of categories for people. I'm, I'm, hey, if you're going to make up prophecy, you might as well make up categories. I don't know that um, that people are classified, identified, and stigmatized in this way, according to the Bible, but who knows? Are committed to keeping it. They want to keep God's law. But now, because of personalized weaknesses embedded in the person, when temptation comes, the root in them is withered. So these people love God and they study the word and they know it. But these people do not have a deep tap root that goes into the earth, taps into the living water of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so when heat comes, their roots quickly withers up. And before you know it, you find them joining the first groups of people, the last group of people. OK, so I guess this is all about who's going to get deceived, which I think you could be in any one of these groups. And if you follow Celestial, you are in the group of the deceived. Uh, let's go to 20 minutes because this is about hybrids and transhumanism. So that's what we're wanting to see some cuckoo about. If you're looking at this, if you can only take one thing away from these messages, wondering why are we hearing so much about fallen angels? Why are we hearing so much about Nephilim? Why do we keep having to hear about alien hybrids and hybrid babies? Anything that is not human cannot be saved. It is incapable of salvation and without salvation, no one shall see God. So basically, Satan is trying to make sure that he can create every other type of thing except the type of thing that can go to heaven. Satan is trying to see, it that, see to it that God gets as few fruit out of his garden as possible. God is the only one that can take away crying, pain, sorrow, and death. But as we will hear in these prophecies, Satan is going to make the strongest case that he can, that he will be able to do it. And in those days, as the Lord has been telling me, there will be raging ethical and moral debates. So what am I talking about? This is where we look at commitment to the faith. I've already spoken about groups that can be easily taken away, ending, of course, with the elect. So if these are all the other groups that can e easily fall to deception, then the elect would be these standing here against all odds. But if there is no commitment to the faith of Jesus Christ, and you cannot be committed to this faith unless you know the word of this faith, which is the Bible, then it I want to say something right now, which obviously she perturbs me. Um, you can't be in this faith unless you hear the gospel. And she's now got 172,000 subscribers who've never heard the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus came from heaven. He's the only begotten son of God. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless, holy, blameless life. He came and preached the good news of the kingdom and that through faith in him, uh, and then he died a, a death um, on a cross, receiving the wrath of God, receiving the punishment of the cross for sinful people. He was sinless. There was no deceit in his mouth. Yet his death and his shed blood on the cross was like the sacrificial lamb of the Old Testament. He was slain as the propitiation for the sins of every man and woman globally. OK, who would put their trust and faith in him. All right. Not only was he slain, he was buried. He was put in a grave. And on the third day, he arose, proving to all that he had the power of, of 
life in within him. And he holds the key to eternal life and the key through faith in him to reconciliation with God. The Bible says that in the gospel of John, it says he went to his own and his own received him not. But to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become a child of God, a child born out of natural descent or of a human decision or of a husband's will, but a child born of God. And the word of God says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And you have to turn away from this, okay, and receive the pure, undefiled, undiluted word of God. This is, this is, these are words of death. But anyway, was, uh, was I done with this? Are we gonna, were we going to go to the next video? Uh, I think we were going to go to the next video. Okay, so back to the nonsense, the crazy. This video is entitled Designer Finance, A Coming Mark of the Beast. Let's listen to the, the introduction and then let's hop into the middle of it and see what kind of convoluted nonsense we can mess jump into. Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. I am in the Supernatural series still. And as part of covering transhumanism, which is the process by which human beings will be offered what seems like an irresistible chance to improve themselves. So normally we would improve ourselves by maybe getting extra education or working out, changing our diet, perhaps. Okay, we went to the 35 seconds. This is 28 minutes long. So we're talking to talk about jumping to the 14 minute mark. She's... <sighs> type of system that will work according to certain things and transhumanism is going to be big in the beast system because the more people trans form their humanity okay the more people trans form their humanity Let's go. the less people are available in the pool of who will go to heaven so the more people say, I need beast eyes, and I need a beast heart, and I need a beast mark, the less people God can expect to find waiting for him in the time when he comes to gather his people out of these trials. So if anyone thinks that these things do not relate to them because they have an alternate viewpoint where they're going to be taken into an alternate visitation with the Lord, all I can say is that Revelation 13 is talking to all living at this time. You will see these changes and transformations before you see any kind of blessed hope. But it is for you to read the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. And it is for me to bring out the prophetic word of the Lord so that those who have an ear to... Okay. Um, she doesn't have an understanding of scripture. Um, one thing about scripture is that you should read it with, with, an, with, a, uh, with a lens toward what is it saying literally? What is it saying grammatically? What was it saying historically some things written in the bible were not written to us <laughs> they're not promises to us they were things that were said to israel in the old testament okay specific for that group of people at that time they're historical they're literal they're grammatical they they have nothing to do with us we can look back and see things god has done what mo's modus operandi of god in the old testament but even many of the things that we see in the Old Testament don't apply to the New Covenant. Oh, so she's talking about pray to God for understanding. Just literally read it and take it at face value without trying to find some super, super hidden meaning behind the scriptures. That's what people like Celestial do. To hear, will hear and understand what God is saying to the churches. And so I saw that in the future, advertising had reached a level that is just, it made me sick. It made me physically sick. It gave me this wanting to throw up vertigo feeling because the billboards were so real that I could not believe that billboard and LCD technology had reached that point. They were so alive that everything looked like I was in Japan. So it was way beyond uh, Times Square. It was way beyond that, whereby Advertising now, when you see it on the buildings, we can only do it one dimensionally. So it's just a normal flat screen. This is the building. And then we just slap a screen on it. And then there's a lady drinking Coca-Cola or trying on new shoes or a boy running. And then the, the images change. And uh, this is more nonsense. Total, total nonsense. Let's go to 
Um, this is the sixth video in this series. I mean, the fact that she draws people in and they listen to this, it it reflects a, a people have to listen to this with a very, you have to have a very, uh, you have to have an imagination. You have to be able to go into the netherworld of, of mania and nonsense. And, and you know, actually, th let's think about what the, what the armor of God is, the belt of truth, okay? You have to take the belt of truth off and go to a place of possibility or the put on the belt of imagination or put on the belt of, I mean, a lot of, like I said, she's very unmerciful. You got to put on the belt of condemnation. You have to put on the belt of hysteria, but you have to take the belt of truth off to go on this ride with this woman, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, righteousness has to do with rightness, which again points to correctness. There's no correctness in what she's saying. Helmet of salvation. Again, there's there's no message of salvation in this woman's prophecy blog. And the Bible says that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ, not foretelling the future, not talking about transhumanism, man, beast, sex, love toys, you know, whatever. Uh, let's check out her. This is her sixth video, transhumanism, synthetics, and the real ID, future markers of the beast. See, see what the topics that she prophesies about are? It's not about the return of Jesus. Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Wow. I'm continuing in the Supernatural series, and I'm looking at a particular branch of the Supernatural that is not only Supernatural, but that discloses very heavy involvement of human beings in this particular type. And we're talking about transhumanism. The prophetic word for today is called transhumanism, synthetics, and the real ID. And this is a fairly recent word that I received from the Lord on December 21st, 2021. Okay, so we're going back to 2021 now. So, so her playlist goes from most recent to oldest. So we're going backwards in time to see the roots of insanity itself. So this is a 50 minute video. Let's go to 25 minutes. It's just, like I said, random, random sampling of her prophecies. And this already, and you see, she has a very specific script. She starts her videos the same way every time. Of course I do too. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, brothers, sisters, friends, enemies, frenemies. You're all welcome here. But I mean, hers is very nice. I mean, but it's not the tempo of, she progresses to these other areas of, of the future. And so this is why the people of God need to decide now to start sowing the necessary seeds of understanding, repentance, holiness, and clinging to the Lord now. If you don't work on your sailing ability, you can hardly claim that when the sea. So you need to sow the seeds of repentance, holiness, and clinging to the Lord now, while in fact, while listening to her, you're not clinging to the Lord and you're not clinging to what God has said. You're clinging to what celestial is saying, which is clearly not coming from God. It's, uh, it's ironic that she says the truth, but the people who are following her can't practice the truth because they're hanging on her every word. She has a very, very cult like following. They will certainly have to uh, come up in my comments and spread hate on this video. But She's leading you away from Jesus, not to him, not to him. You can't follow her and be following Jesus. He is doing this and the winds are blowing and the storms rise. That is when you're suddenly going to become a master sailor. It's impossible and it doesn't work like that. So the second dream that I had was about synthetics. There's a brand new dream that the Lord gave me about synthetics, but I'm not making that a video because I've shared in older videos and occasionally in the new videos that there is no point in making every prophetic message into a video. That would be just conflating the issue. That would just be repetitiveness. Whenever I cover a topic, I'm going to cover at least enough to teach the topic fully. And then I'm going to move on to the next thing because there are many things that the Lord wants his people to know and understand. And so I'm going to speak about synthetics. And not one thing that the Lord wants you to know and understand is coming from celestial. Go to your Bible, saints. Go to your Bible. It contains everything that the Lord wants you to know. In fact, it says... Study to show thyself approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
And 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. There's nothing you need for life and godliness uh, in the past or in the present or in the future that's not contained in the Bible. So this woman is a liar, a hypocritical liar who is leading many people off course here briefly about the other dream and then you can always go to the master's voice and read about the fact that there are even synthetics in the rural areas so please do not think that this is a city-based phenomenon where there are non-human people and robotic people walking around in the urban areas but then in the rural areas just because everybody's a good old boy down there there then everyone is a human being that is not the case so the second dream i had in this prophetic series was a synthetic and it was nothing but god showing me a supernaturally beautiful looking slightly Asian woman. This woman looked exactly the way you see Japanese anime. So she was very pretty and very petite with the nipped waist and everything, and she was modestly dressed. So to those who think that synthetics are automatically um, sons of Satan who show themselves, and that's how you'll know them because they act like... Oh, that's... You can tell that tree by its fruit. Okay, here we are. The new man, the beast, sexual immorality, Nephilim, and the 144,000... And this was published, it says a year ago, but it could have been longer ago. The dating on a lot of YouTube videos is not very good. Oh, she looks so sweet and kind in the beginning of the video. She looks so kind and sweet. Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very, very welcome. Just a few announcements. Hello, welcome to Satan. Welcome to hell. Welcome to hell. You're very welcome here in hell. This is 56 minutes. What's happened? 50, 20, 20, 20. Let's just go about 20, 28 minutes, 30 seconds. Let's see where we are on the the beast, sexual immorality, Nephilim, and the 144,000. Let's just take a few minute litmus test of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Don't you want to live longer? Now you can be three times stronger with engineered limbs made from light titanium and steel to replace your breakable bones. So again, God was talking, but the voice coming out of him was this voice. And he said to me, Celestial, this is the voice of the beast. This is the voice that you will hear night and day and night and day and see happy adverts on TV and advertisements of the medications that will be able to do this until people get sick of hearing it. Some people are going to do this. Not I'm already sick. And then the second type of modern. Okay, so let's go. I'm sick of hearing this. This is so cuckoo. This is the coming of the perfect people snippets to share okay this is our opening 30 seconds and then we're gonna go no oh, this is a short video oh thank you lord this is a short video and then the second type of modded human is where i will share this dream the other type of modded humanity is born that way they become a hybrid from this must be a she must have chopped a video up and put out a shorter video because she didn't have no introduction this time and this prayer shawl thing this shawl means absolutely nothing she is not covered this woman has no covering she is not covered by God because she's not sent from God. The womb. These are exceptionally genetically enhanced people. And I'm talking about enhanced to the millionth degree. So if humanity is a dial whereby someone can be handsome, very handsome, unbelievable handsome, and who on earth is that? Or it can be dialed back the other way. This type of person will be dialed forward in every possible way. And then the knob will be broken off and thrown away. The Lord said... These people are free from sickness, free from genetic defect, free from disease. It will be, and I was seeing something as, you know, when you have a live wire, they usually put live and. Okay, let's jump forward. Um, obviously, she's talking about genetically modified people. So let's go to 644. In the employment world, in the dating world, my baby's not going through that. And they're going to a black couple make the decision to also push the needle a little bit further. So here is the dream. That I saw. I dreamt that oh, dream. the uh, times uh, had come. A dream, you know, of course. She got a dream. This is all told, foretold in the Bible. That when people get led astray, that these people will prophesy from their own imagination. And they'll tell tales from their own 
minds, their own dreams. Um, and uh, the society was becoming extremely segregated between what God made and what God did not make. And sometimes human beings decided that they were going to go to what I just call the fringe. So I usually just call it the fringe. This is a place where there will not be a lot of services. Why? Because nobody expected people to want to live in those areas. The nicely done areas, city areas, fancy areas are going to be extremely made up for the comfort of the new world order. And so part of that society is having these things walking around. Maybe you're a cop, just like it showed in that movie, Bright. Your partner is going to be some creature from the Blue Lagoon. And Okay, and there was a movie, I think it was a Netflix movie called Bright. And it had, I think it was a Will Smith, Will Smith in it. He was a police officer. I think it was Will Smith. But anyway, they had other cops that were these animal creatures. It seems like Celestial is very um, into sci-fi action movies, Marvel comics, uh, weird stuff, weird fantasy movies about the future. I mean, most of the themes of her imagination are coming from things that have been in other people's imagination. And those people weren't Christians who made those movies, Celestial. So she's coming from the same spirit that's in the world. So this is uh, this is video number eight and there's only nine videos in this playlist so play a little bit more and then we'll jump to number nine i hope this is showing somebody this is not a prophet of god and the two of you are going to work together that is how it is and so i saw that christians wanted to move out and so they were being bussed out and there was this lady on the bus she was a redhead very good looking woman in very good shape she did not want to go to this place so she did not want to go to where the other christians were going she was a christian but you know that christianity is full of all types those who really are and those who just say they are because it's trendy and it's convenient for now she did not want to go to this place and so when the bus stopped at a gas station the bus stopped at a gas station there I saw the perfect people. They literally, in the dream, it almost as if they were being filmed from below so that they looked like superheroes, Captain America. It was a black guy, a black girl, and a brunette and a blonde. Um, brunette guy and blonde girl, and then, and they were not like dating or anything. They were just people. And they were standing there in sports clothes. So you know the, the little sleeveless thing and the short shorts they basically looked as if they, they ran track or competed varsity i have never seen such perfectly sculpted people in my life okay let's go to the first one in this series oh my goodness <clears throat> the first one in this series of transhumanism has a td jakes as the uh <laughs> the title of this is revelation 13 prophecy prayer call okay i've seen one of these videos before they are absolutely cuckoo for cocoa puffs to the 10 millionth degree so we're gonna just do like five minutes of this then we're gonna be done with a playlist because i'm going to clear the field i'm going to take away much of these you were talking about old wood i'm going to clear the field of the old wood i'm going to clear the field of the dead wood and i'm going to set them on fire in a way that everyone will watch them burn if i don't take away these false pastors if i don't take away these false teachers if i don't take away these false prophets then i'm not god and i know how much you fear when i say i am not god okay yeah so Nothing in here about the Lord God is calling you to repentance. Um, nothing in here about uh, the mercy of God, the, the goodness of God, the kindness of God. Um, let's see. Let's go back here a little bit and see what she says. These false pastors, if I don't take away these false teachers, if I don't take away these false prophets, then I am not God. And I know how much. Okay, so if these false pastors, false teachers are not taken away. Um, in other words, if they don't experience the wrath of God, God doesn't strike them down in some way, then God is not God. Um, no, I'm going to say no on that. That didn't come from God because there were numerous figures in the Bible who weren't struck down by God and God remained God. And I don't know of anywhere in the Bible where he ever said that in any other circumstance, not, not with any of the most wicked people of the Old Testament. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm knowing she's not hearing this from God you fear when I say I am not God. You always tell me, no, Lord, it's okay. You don't need to say it to that level. You don't need to swear to that level. I already believe you. I am telling you, I will take them away. I will cut them down in the middle of their sermon. They're going to die on camera. They will not die at home in peace with their family around them. They will drop dead on the pulpit. That peace, it will be trending on YouTube. It will have 2 million views. How so-and-so died while preaching a message. Wow. I mean, look, y'all, we hit the jackpot here. This is 
this is celestial. And keep in mind, uh, Matthew 12, we've had this up here for a while. Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 through 38, but especially verse 35. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. This is men speak from their hearts for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, let's hear what's in Celestial's heart because this is not coming from God. And there are a few who will say, oh, this is so sad, but the majority, I'm telling you people will wake up. They will wake up because when they see judgment, they're going to learn how to fear the name of God. When a man dies while preaching, it's not a joke. That's how you know that God is still alive. That's how you will remember everything that God has told Okay, wait a minute. We got a little... Hold on. Let me pause this a second. So she changed the... Uh, a lot of times she does these 9 by 16 or 9 by the the phone style videos uh, shaped like a TikTok or, or a Facebook reel or something like that or a short. She does it with the profile, you know, not landscape. So she this video shifted landscape and she's she's doing a voiceover, but she's not appearing in it. So I want you to see what she's doing, what picture she's putting with her voice. I just just so we can see that, too. Told us to observe as ministers in the word of God, the proper protocols we are to observe as we approach this hallowed work. They will be dropping dead on CNN, dropping dead on the different news channels. When people see it, they will learn how to respect the God of Israel. We will come back to order in this church one way or another. Mm. You better hear me and you better tell them when you go to preach to them. God says he will establish order in the sanctuary. Who? Oh, you know, see, so a lot of these guys, who was this guy? John Gray. The other one was Todd. Um, Mike Todd. Mike Todd, John Gray. Well, she had T.D. Jakes up there, too. She had Stephen Furtick. She has Marcus Rogers on a lot of stuff. She going off. Um, I don't disagree with her. These guys are false teachers, but yeah. Who doesn't like it? Who likes it? Order will come back to the ranks of God. If you are not a pastor, God will sit you down from the ministry in such a way that you might not be able to get up again and walk. <sighs> Celestia, you need to sit down. <laughs> you need to sit down. Um, you need to quit putting boils on people's butts and backsides. You need to quit talking about abhorrent, uh, sadistic sex rituals and stuff. That Then you're calling, saying God showed you things that he doesn't show you because he doesn't want those things even in our mind. So you need to sit down and you need to shut up. And I, yeah, I use the word shut up. You need to shut it, shut it all down and shut that mouth down. That mouth is a pure mouth of, oh uh, yeah, a Thyatiran false prophet. Read the, the, the warning in, uh, what is it? Revelation two about a church that tolerated that woman, Jezebel, who seduces her servants and leads them into sexual immorality and debauchery. And she has children too. But he said the the condemnation was against those who tolerated a woman just like Celestial. He will not just sit you down in a spiritual way by causing the ministry to break down, causing people to leave the church until you are so few that you can't even have a proper service. Some people, God will sit you down in a way, walking will be finished for you. You will be sitting in a chair for the rest of your life, a wheelchair. You won't walk anymore. You will be like Mephibosheth, who had no working legs. You will be sat down permanently. And then you will understand who God is and who you are, and that you are not to approach the altar of God, to burn incense when nobody called you, when nobody anointed you, when nobody told you, come and burn incense before the Lord. God is saying that the time has come. He is going to set the righteous in very high positions. He's going to set the righteous in their designated places. In their, in their assigned positions. That is what he's saying. The assigned positions have been empty long enough. David, rise up and take your seat. Saul, come down now. I will no longer talk. Oh, that sounds like a Marcus Rogers teaching there. The Davids are going to rise up against the Sauls. Maybe there's something Maybe there's something similar and familiar, even though she's called out Marcus Rogers and she really seems to detest Marcus Rogers. Maybe there's something that they see in each other that really sets them off. But this woman is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned for her. I hope and pray she repents and her followers will get off the idolatry that they have for this false prophet 
because it's a it's a cult type mentality that follows her. Um, but I'm concerned because think keep in mind the Bible does say, "Judge not that you be not judged." For by the measure you judge, the same will be measured to you. I mean, she could be, in fact, calling these things that she wants to happen to others down upon herself, and that would do the very thing that she's claiming God wants to do. That would put the fear of God in people who really need to have the fear of God. People who follow a false teacher, a false prophet. Tolerate this evil leadership, this evil rulership. I will no longer tolerate it anymore. David, rise up and take your place. Saul, come down now. Your reign is over. Your rule is over. Hey, your time is over. I will bring order back to the sanctuary. I will bring order back to the church. That's my time. I will bring order back among the sheep. The sheep are very loose nowadays. They run here and there, feeding on the wild clover. Their bellies are expanded with gas and wind. They are full of false doctrine and so proud with it. They have learnt nothing. They have learnt from liars. They have learnt from the false teachers. And yet they are so proud of the nothing that they know. They don't have discipline. They don't have order. They're infected and infested with lice, with fleas. This is a generation that has been bred and raised on lies. This is as bad as the Middle Ages when the truth of the gospel all but disappeared. The Middle Ages, the Dark Ages were called dark because the word of God was almost totally lost at that time. And man became a hideous creature, performing great wickedness one against another. And that is what we have in this generation now. People absolutely and utterly deceived, prideful and following after their own hearts. They have forsaken the way of God. I see a path. The path is going straight. And a man has completely bent off the path. And I mean, this is not even a small deviation from the main path. This is something almost like a parabolic arc, meaning with each step, he is going a huge amount away of deviation, away from the true path. And he is oblivious, absolutely oblivious that he is departing from the living God to follow after his own way, to follow after the deception of the times. People will perish because of their lack of knowledge. God says that people will perish because they grossly misgage the times. They don't even know the times that we are in. Times of light and dark. Times of separation, total separation, good and evil. No more mixing. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. That's what God is saying. Serve God and live. Serve the devil and be given over totally to perdition and destruction. There is no middle ground. There is no gray area. Choose God. And you and your family with you shall live like Noah. Reject God and be handed over for trial, tribulation, testing in the hands of the beast. A merciless system, a fully automated system. Every oh, it's it's merciless, you know. But the reasons for the reason for its mercilessness is not God. It's because well, celestial's merciless. Celestial, celestial has no mercy. Celestial has no grace. She has no. Make this perfectly clear. This woman has no gospel. I, uh, okay, so that's nine videos that we, yeah, we, we just watched the, the beginning. She's welcome to this channel. Welcome to the new and the old and to the new subscribers. I have an announcement for you. You're going to find this over here. I mean, you jump in the middle <laughs> in randomly in anywhere about the halfway point is and with no preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ. She could be preaching to people who the deliverance frauds are preaching to who think they're Christians and they're not and they're not converted because they they've never trusted Christ see that this kind of message if, if you don't have trust in Christ it would cause you to be fearful it would cause you to have anxiety it would cause you to have worry it might cause you to maybe stockpile some food or maybe you know to, to to build a shelter to move to the will you know the woods you know to 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 detach from reality and society but because we have the gospel, because we have trusted in him. And the word of God says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Her messages are a destruction of actual faith in God. Because you're, what are you doing? You're putting all your faith in, in what Celestial says. You're putting all your faith in deception. You're actually being deceived, y'all. So anyway, this is Brother Rob Wilson. In uh, how long did we do this? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you care. We're just over an hour. We re reviewed nine videos in Celestial's playlist on transhumanism and bestiality in the end times. Mark and avoid. This woman is not of God, probably not a Christian, and leading many people off of the straight and narrow way. Grace, peace, and love in Jesus' name. Amen.